Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nah. Uh. Wrestling 101, class is in session Pay attention to the teachings, that's from Andrew and Derek I mean these guys making the killer with no competition Dynamic duo better than the Hardy Boys and the Dudley Boys Everybody make some noise, mess with them, you get destroyed They cannot be beat, take a seat, watch them do they thing on the MIC Face defeat, they cannot be seen like JC Oh my goodness, it's in killer spree, yeah? Hey everyone, this is Andrew from Wrestling IQ 101. When I'm not hosting our podcast, I'm usually at CollarAndElbowBrand.com. That's right, Collar and Elbow is the only place that combines wrestling with street attire. And I know what you're thinking, I want to look fashionable too, and I also want to save 10%. So head over to CollarAndElbowBrand.com and use the promo code WIQ101 and look fashionable and save some money. And now, on with the show. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Wrestling IQ 101. I'm Andrew, and you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wrestling IQ 101. And today I'm sitting with wrestling's richest prize, Darius Carter. How's it going, man? The founding father of change. And the best thing going today, it's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Well, we really do appreciate you taking out the time. Well, I do. And um, so Darius, man, uh, what's been going on, man? How you been? I've been amazing. I've uh, been outstanding. It's been the run of my career. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I had a, a second UK tour this year, uh, and I went. That was a two-week tour, mm-hmm. every single day, two matches a day at least. Wow! It was incredible. That's the life. That's what I want. I love that. Um, I did that. I got WrestleCade mm-hmm. um, on the twenty-third through the twenty-fifth. So I was there for the Fan Fest. One of the best experiences of my life career. Yeah. You actually were victorious, right? I was victorious. I yeah. was. It's Azrael, right? My, that's right. In my natural habitat, victory. Yeah, victory. Uh, but yeah, I defended the BCW uh, World Heavyweight Championship. It is a legit world title because it was defended in Canada as well. Um, and I'll be taking that to the UK. So. Wow. And also, you were interviewed by Ambi, right? Uh-huh. How I was, was that? I was interviewed. Yeah, she, <laughs> she's, uh, she's uh, something. She's a character, you know? I always I say that she's this little sweet, cute little girl, but she's uh-huh. really got some. She's got some fire in her. Really? Know? Yeah, she's got a little bit of uh, smarminess to her. We had a little back and forth. Oh yeah, on she, the Twitter, she didn't look very pleasant. Uh, she's, yeah, she's uh, not as pleasant as uh, <laughs> as as she leads on to be. But no, she was she was she was fine. She, yeah, she, she did what she needed. Pretty to do. cool. You know, she did what she needed. She's to do. also had a problem with somebody else. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Um, yeah, it's fun. Though. Yeah, it's, oh, it's yeah. fun because she's no you because. She, you know, oh, you don't MJF. want to just sit there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that, MJF. Yeah, him, that guy. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. You know, now that you, you know, you're hitting this great stride, man, you're talking about going overseas, going to Canada, you know, who are some of the opponents that you look at now and say, you know, this is the marquee match that I need to have? You know, there's there are a few people that are kind of uh, on the train, you know what I mean, that are in motion that I'd like to be in there and get in the ring with. It's honestly, I, I want I want to test those people. Everybody that's getting that 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 golden treatment or getting that you know that preferential mm-hmm. lesson, let's go. I'll get in the ring with you. There's nobody. I, there's nobody in this business that I don't th- feel I can match with. I can get in there and and not compete with. And that's not a place of arrogance. That's a place of confidence. That's a place of of assurance. I know that I can find my way in and out of wherever I need to get out of. Mm-hmm. Um, no matter who I'm in there with. So I want those challenges. That's why I want the BCW Heavyweight Championship. That's why I have it. Mm-hmm. I, want to, I want people to come to me. I want you to challenge me and try and, and, and step your game up just as I'm stepping mine up. You know? Yeah. You know, I look back at places like All In and they have this huge show. You know, what do you feel like you need to do to get some on um, something like that? You know, like... I, uh, I, All In is, I mean... The thing about a show like All In is it's not just about, you know, how good you are. It's not just about how talented you are. and It's not about uh, uh, complaining or making making 
you know, excuses. It's just, it is what it is. It's just, you mm-hmm. have to, you, not everybody is going to be in a position to be on a show like All In. Whether you're good enough for that type of show or not. Mm-hmm. There, there are, you know, there's the Young Bucks, there's Cody. Those, you, those are a group of people. That's a tight-knit group of people. Mm-hmm. And they have people that they like. They have wrestlers that are their friends and mm-hmm. that are good wrestlers, very good wrestlers, world-traveled wrestlers. That's what's going to get the spot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Th- those guys are going to get the all-in spot. Uh, you know, I'm yeah. not in that circle. Okay. So let's talk about the crusade for change, man. Mm-hmm. Like, how did that all come about, and how did you feel like you needed to bring some of that with you after leaving? Uh, how that ended? Yeah, well, the crusade, I mean, it's not that it ended. It's just kind of, it's it's kind of low, went into the shadows. Mm-hmm. You know, it kind of, uh, uh, we kind of dispersed and did our own thing. And that's the thing that people don't really, people aren't understanding. That's also part of the story. Mm-hmm. You know, you had you know, Gangone, who's in the House of Glory now with with uh, Amazing Red. That energy of the Crusade came, went with him there. Mm. When you think about it, that okay. energy, that that Crusade energy has not. It's just dispersed into different avenues. Mm-hmm. Whereas I've carried the energy overseas and carried it to Wrestlecade and carry it to championship victories. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm doing. Gangone, House of Gangone. You know, with with Amazing Red and that now they're going to CZW. That's mm-hmm. there. You know, TJ was in SWF, being the heavyweight champ over there. You know, ruling that place. So we've we've kept our energy. We've kept a lot of that that message. Um, it's just that run, unfortunately, with Beyond ended up being what it was, and you know, it was wonderful, and then it ended, and now it's kind of yeah, you know, doing its thing. You know, how how do you go from teaming up with these guys, forming that brotherhood, and then just wrestling them? And individual matches, you know, like you had your matches with TJ, you had matches with Gang Gone. Yeah. You know, how do you go from being like, I, you know, we were pretty close to now, it's about the win. That's what that's what it's always been about with me though, mm-hmm. and that's, I've never been transparent. Um, I've been transparent. I've never been um, uh, false to that. I've never lied to that. I've never uh, pretended like I'm I'm not that. You know, victory comes first, and I surrounded myself. With, with these people because they were victorious. They were they were winning people. Gangong's a winning person and TJ's a winning person. The Minutemen were winning people. The Carnies winning people. Mm-hmm. So that's the only people I want in my camp. I don't want anybody that doesn't know how to how, how to to play the game to to know how to be successful. Um, so that's really what it's all about. It's all about getting to the top and and making sure that you are surrounded by people that have that same ambition. If you don't have ambition, I don't need you. Mm-hmm. And and I wouldn't want you to to keep me around if I wasn't ambitious. Yeah, you know I don't need empathy, pity, or any of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Say it like it is. You know, talking about BC um, Battle Club Plural and the Carnies, you teaming up with them. Mm-hmm. Um, great matches, by the way. Thank you. Um, you recently had a match with Jimmy Havoc. Mm-hmm. And uh, that that was pretty uh pretty nice victory for you, man. Like how how was it getting in there with him and and just knowing that you know, uh-huh. th- this guy. He's he's a weapon fiend. You're not really a a cheater. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a Jimmy Havoc. Let's mm-hmm. put it that way. Jimmy, you know, almost cut my head off with an axe in the yeah. middle of a wrestling match. And and how that happened, the ref wasn't awake. I mean, this is insanity. You'd think somebody would have ran into the ring. In all seriousness, someone should have run into the ring. <laughs> yeah, right. And and taken an axe from this man. And that's not what happened. And that just goes to show the type of, of, of humanity that's lacking in that type of crowd with those type of people. Uh, Jimmy Havoc is inhumane. You know, he's not... He's not a, a, one of us, and I'm not one of you either. But he's not a, a, a human. He's 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 a creature. He's he's a he's a freak. He's one of those. Um, so, you know, it was incredible driving him through that chair, hitting him with foreclosure, pitting him, and everyone had to take the facts. Everyone had to accept the fact that I was the better man that day. That was a great feeling. I went home. That was one. That was an incredible feeling coming home with that. That victory. You know, I'm riding in the in the, in the, in the back of the. Very nice limo, but we, went out. we did some things. But you know, that was a celebration night. There were a few uh, corks that were uh, that yeah. were popped yeah. for that night. That was a big win. So you know, it's very interesting when you started out, right? You were hanging out with Magic a lot, right? Mm-hmm. How was it? Because I know Magic pretty well, and he, every time I see him, just get more and more respect for that guy. Just somehow, he just says something that just makes you even feel even warmer. The last time, from the last time you saw him, how was it learning from him and working with him? If you Magic was and is. 
Uh, Magic's just the man. He's the guy. Yeah. Uh, he helped train me. It was him. It was Richie Rott in the BWO. Preacher, Phineas James, who came around in like 2000, uh, 2009, 2010. Mm-hmm. And then Nunzio. Oh, wow. Nunzio. Uh, Nunzio, yeah. Little Guido, man. That guy is a tremendous professional wrestler. I'm talking about technical. We would get, just get in there mm-hmm. and uh, just lock up, just grabbing holds. And he would, man, we would do some, some amateur things. And, uh, you know, I always say to him that I want the match with him. I always want, you always want the match with your trainers. Mm-hmm. You always want a one-on-one match. I had a match with Magic, uh, and I defeated Magic, and that was a wonderful feeling. Because I, I don't just want to face them, I want to beat them and, and let them know that you have, literally, they've done their job. You know, mm-hmm. you did your job, you, you've taught, you've passed on, and now the torch has been moved, you know, moved above you. And that's fine, that's what you want as a teacher, you know. Yeah, that's it. Do you see yourself maybe teaching in the future, maybe doing commentary? Is it just, or is it just wrestling? Uh, wrestling, it's wrestling. The passion is wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, the thing is, is I don't think that I could be in this business if I wasn't wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, I say that now, of course, at my young age, but um, my young but old age. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, I don't see myself. Doing anything, of course. I think I, I, it's not that I don't think I could. Mm-hmm. I don't think I, I have plenty to that I could contribute in a lot of different ways. But I just don't see myself being the man that's sitting outside the ring and and watching. And at that point, I would I think I would move back into business, the business world. You know, if I'm not physically wrestling, I don't know. Yeah, it's not the same. You know, another guy that you just took it to was the guy Pete Dunn. Uh huh. You know, yes. Uh, yes, current WWE. You you UK champion. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, know, you you uh you kind of gave him some injuries, right? I gave him well. Uh, it was the belt. I uh, hit him with a belt, the tier mm-hmm. one, uh, championship. And in retrospect, I should have hit him with the uh in, in so many ways. I should have hit him with the the WWE UK <laughs> championship. Um, instead, I hit him with the tier one, and then the, the belt wrapped around, and it caught him, and uh, that was that. You know. Uh, that's what caused the bleeding. It wasn't uh, a pedigree uh, onto the belt. It wasn't a pedigree onto the floor. It wasn't a pedigree off of the rafters where I didn't let his arms go. It wasn't, you know, I didn't pedigree him onto uh, onto a bob bomb. You know what I mean? <laughs> give me a give me a break. Uh, so we did what we we did what we did, man. Listen, listen. Nobody see. This is what we talk about. We talk about what Darius does to people. We talk about the uh, what pe- what happens, and it's never anything nearly as as major as people want to complain about. But with me, we don't talk about the fact that I was sitting, I was on the rafters, standing mm-hmm. up there. Pete Dunn is throwing probably about sixteen chairs just at me. Mm-hmm. I can't say he was aiming; they were just coming. And that's just part of it. You know what I mean? I, I don't complain. I get thrown down rafters and I didn't, it wasn't a weak landing. It, I landed. We don't talk about that. Wrestling in general is rough. There are plenty of things that have happened to me. There's a lot that has happened to me. Trust me, I've taken a lot physically and I've given it out too. And that's the business. Yeah. You know, this, this is not, you're not, this is not mail delivery. You know, this is not, uh, you're not a golf caddy. We're do, you not... think, do you think you don't get that sympathy because people don't like you? I mean, you get booed huh. a lot of places. You you yeah. wrestle. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is, you think that might be one of the reasons why? Because people feel gratification seeing you. Because uh, uh. you taunt them too. You you yeah. get in their face sometimes and you let them have it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. Because they deserve to have it. Mm-hmm. I'm not a pretender. I'm not a. I'm not a fraudulent individual. All right. People are bothersome. People are fraud are, are fraudulent, and they mm-hmm. present one thing, and then they 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 say they're one thing, and they present another. And I see it all around me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So, you know, I will take the time if a if a fan is approaching me the wrong way, which most of them do. Mm-hmm. It's just the way it is. You're gonna approach me. You're touching me. You want to touch me. You want me to sign something. You put it in my face, mm-hmm. and you're like, sign this for me. What do you mean? That's rude. I don't come over to you. And put something in your face, and that's that's what it is. Fans, they, they they're lack, sometimes there's a lack of decency, and a lot of that's on the wrestlers because the wrestlers have become friends with these fans. Mm-hmm. The wrestlers are buddy buddies with these fans. They go out drinking, they hang out, they stay in each other's houses, and, and the curtain has been pulled back. You know, and mm-hmm. then we wonder how. There's all this integration now. You have to separate. We have to bring the magic back. We have to allow that to 
to flow. You know, we can't sell the business because we want a $25 purchase of our t-shirt. That's not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's not, that's not right. That's not fair to the business. So let me ask you this, because you don't discriminate. You wrestled some women. Sure. Uh, how is it getting in the ring? Because you've been in the ring with so many great women. Uh-huh. Uh, I have a couple here on my list. Uh, Kimberly. Mm-hmm. Beat her. Uh, you know, Mia Yim. Yeah. Uh, you know, Mercedes yeah. Martinez. Uh-huh. And also uh, great one. Holly Dead. I mean, these yeah. are some, these beat are women. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. funny how you, how you were like, I beat her. Um, <laughs> you know, you see these women just popping up all over the place and stuff like that. You know, do you, you know, how do you feel preparing for a match with with, with um, one of these females? You know, the question is, how do they feel preparing for a match with me? Uh, I I don't look at women any differently than in a ring, in a wrestling ring. Mm-hmm. I don't look at a woman any differently than I look at a man. Uh, then I look at an alien. Then I look at a monster. Mm-hmm. If you're against in that ring with me, I have to beat you. That's the yeah. that's what I have to do. I need to defeat you. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be friendly with you. I'm not going to exchange. Uh, uh, roll ups and 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 holds and and do all these things with you. I'm not here to to have fun with you. I'm not here to dance with you. Mm-hmm. I have to beat you. I have to make you submit. I have to pin you, and I have to do this as quickly as possible. Is is is. I don't have to do this as quickly as possible, but I need to do this as safely as possible to myself. Mm-hmm. So it's me or you. It's yeah. me or you in that ring. It's me or you in that ring. Yeah. That's how I look at it, and it has to be me. But even with somebody like Holly Dead, you know she has the mind games. You know the you know she's a little different from the rest of the the females out there. You know she has a different kind of mentality. I mean, even if for a male superstar with that kind of mentality, darker, edgier side, you know how do you prepare for somebody like that? You know compared to maybe just your straight up, you know, brawler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. Holiday, see, Holiday had to learn. There's just as there are facets of facing her, uh-huh. as we're talking about her, there's a lot of facets to facing me. Mm-hmm. I have one of the best win loss records on the independent scene that people don't want to give it credit, people want to talk about it, but mm-hmm. it's the truth. I, I'm, I'm just a winner. And that's because I know my ring. I treat the ring like it's my, my real estate, I treat it like it's my temple. Mm-hmm. All right? If I'm near the ropes, I know to roll out, I know to put a foot on the rope. All right. If I'm outside the ring, I know how to get around the post and get back in. I know how to outmaneuver and outshuffle. Mm-hmm. That's what keeps me alive. And I think people want to take that away from me. I'm not just a, a, a some arrogant uh, blowhard that comes out and talks and is an okay wrestler. I'm a, a fine, proficient professional wrestler. Mm-hmm. I, I do this very well. So if you're going to try mind games with me, don't think that I don't have mind games myself. Don't think that... I, this is what my that's my one of my greatest strengths is mm-hmm. my intelligence. So she can play a mind game. You think I can't play the same thing? Mm. Come on, um, that makes sense to me. Come on, you know, one thing I find fascinating, man, is you come out and like we talked a little to before that the fans boo you. You know, do you want that that um, you know that thing that every wrestler aspires for that that cheer from the crowd? You know, uh, cheering your name, cheering that's awesome for you. Um, no, no, I don't want it. Because it's not it's not real. Mm. <laughs> it's not it's not real. And and I think a lot of people get caught in thinking that it is. They they can show their support, they can chant, but at the end of the day, it's always a game of favoritism. Mm-hmm. That is a game of favoritism. Who gets cheered the loudest? Who gets loved the most? Who gets supported the most? That's mm-hmm. never gotten me to where I am none of that ever worked for me none of that ever propelled me it works for some people it doesn't work for me you know if you're booing me if you're at least then you're being more honest you're being more honest because you are jealous you are jealous and it's not just about my my wealth or my or how I keep myself it's about the fact that I don't have to go out here and 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 bow to somebody and pretend to be something I'm not to get ahead, to get successful. Everything that I've gotten in my career, I have earned. Every place that I have gone, I have earned the right to go there. I didn't have to ask somebody and have to beg someone. I didn't have to hang out with you uh, six, and move to your house and live in your attic. I didn't have to do that to get to where I'm getting to. Mm-hmm. Every place, every inch I'm getting is a, key, is a sign of my own success. And that's where I take pride in. That's why I take pride in the fact that this Fight TV uh, debut that Capital Wrestling just had. I'm the first match that they put on there. Darius Carter. Yeah, that was pretty huge. That's a huge thing. That's a that's a real life deal. All right. Yeah. With BCW, their Fight TV deal. Now that I'm BCW World Champion, we're gonna get that promoted 
as much as possible. I'm going to have more marquee matches to have on Fight TV to be seen across the world. It's the largest combat sports provider in the world. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. And it's crazy because how many shows have been on there? Mm -hmm. I mean, events and stuff like that. And, you know, like you said, you're kicking off the show. Mm -hmm. First match people are seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, next one you might be closing the show. I mean, if you're the main event, you know, mm -hmm. you are the champion. Um, you know, how have you evolved from when you started till now? It's a maturation process. You have to go through things to, to get better, to improve. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of things. I've had a lot of things happen to me. I've had things happen to people around me that I was observant of and made sure that didn't happen to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I just continue to, to love the business. If you love something, you, it, it grows. Love is growing. Mm -hmm. It's eternal. And my passion for wrestling, just like a passion for business where I'm able to do that, and, and, and grow with that. With, with wrestling, mm -hmm. I'm able to look at something and see a different perspective uh, every single day. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud of everything that I've done. I'm proud as far as I've gotten. I've worked, I've worked hard. I've worked, and I've kept my hustle. I've kept my hustle silent. I don't have to go out here and say that I do this and do that. I don't have to, to brag. I don't, because people, it's, just, it's just known. And if you don't know it, then shame on you. You will know. You mm -hmm. will know. You know, the thing that I found interesting, you know, it was under a different building. It was the JP Banner. You know, how was it being a part of that company? Because that's, that's what I grew up on. Yeah, JPW. That was an incredible experience. That, and I was the first match and the first entrance mm -hmm. of that JAPW show. That was everything I could ask for. You know, that was a, the people that have stepped foot in JAP. Mm -hmm. You know, from from the Charlie Haases to uh, to uh, low key to homicide to the Hit Squad, the uh, Hit Squad. Pardon me, <laughs> D A. <Come> on. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Learn how to spell. Um, <laughs> the, anyone who's everyone, Samoa Joe. The, these they have stepped foot. That was a hotbed. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember being in the crowd. And and I and, and seeing how many people it was one of the big I think it was the biggest crowd I had seen to that point and this was this had to have been ten years ago. Yeah, I could not wait to get in that rec center. I mean, it's crazy now. We paid, you know, we paid twenty bucks to see Samoa Joe and Rhino and uh, AJ Styles, and now you got to pay a hundred and twenty bucks just to sit in the nosebleeds to see those guys in WWE. It's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely crazy. But that's what it's all about, and that's what I aspire to be and do, man. Mm -hmm. When I, when it comes to being wrestling's richest prize, people really should be appreciating me. People really should be paying to see me because I am an experience, and mm -hmm. I am something that has to continue to grow to get to that point where I am at, in the center of that ring. And guess what? If you want to see Darius Carter, mm -hmm. you want to see Mr. Darius Carter, you better be shelling out triple digits at, at the minimum. Yeah. That's how much I, I care about the business, and that's how much I feel I can contribute to the business. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been rattled by a fan or an injury in the ring at all? No, no, no. no? Never. I've never been injured. I mean, you know, and that's... I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say I make sure I don't get injured because there are people that sh make sure they don't get injured and still get hurt. It's a freak yeah. thing. It's a free accident. But I protect myself. I'm I, I don't do dumb things mm -hmm. uh, as many people like to do in 2018, uh, and it's gonna get even funnier in 2019. Um, but uh, you know I don't put myself in that position. Um, fans rattling me no because you'd have to be you'd have to know something about me that I don't. No. You'd, have, <laughs> you'd have to shake me up. You're not going to shake me up. If anything, you, you plenty of fans start with me. They don't mm -hmm. talk about that. They come up to me. They say something smart, mm -hmm. something they feel is smart. And then I come back with a rebuttal, and they're hurt. They're injured. That's the injury. I don't, it's not that I'm <laughs> physically just injuring people. It's emotionally. People yeah. are emotionally injured by the existence of Darius Carter. And, and I love it. I live for that. What's, That's what I live for. What's the best thing you've heard and that you said back? I've had people, <laughs> oh, oh, God, people are funny, man. People come up to me with a pen, and, and it'll be like, you know, uh, hey, jerk, can you sign my paper? Uh-huh. And, uh, and, and I look at these kids, and I look at this kid, 
You know what I mean? I was like, where, where have you learned that word? Is that what you get called in class? Mm-hmm. Is that Does your teacher call you that when all the other kids have gone out to recess and you get left behind? Wow. Where do you get the word jerk from? You know what I mean? And I said, well, you know what? Let me see that pen. And I take that pen and I toss the pen. You know, maybe I drop the pen and I tell them to pick it up. You know what it is? It's, it's, it's etiquette. It's decency. You know, I, mm-hmm. I was raised better than a lot of the, 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 the world today, majority mm-hmm. of the world today. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it was back in the 90s, the early 90s, late 80s, that it was a better period in life. I'm not sure. But people aren't born with the same respect. They don't wash their hands. People don't wash their hands. They use the restroom. Oh, yeah. And do not wash their hands. I don't get it. They, you, you, you walk into a place. You don't hold doors open. And you don't say thank you when you, someone holds a door for you. You know what I mean? You, you want instant gratification with minimal effort you don't want to do anything and you want it handed to you that's what people want people just want to not be bothered and to be successful at the same token yeah they want paparazzi outside but they don't want anyone taking pictures come on come on you know darius we always ask people this you know wwe has their story time where they tell ribs or road trip stories do you have any good ones that you could share oh road trips (laughs) uh I don't like getting stuck in a, in a car with people. I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather get the get the ride. I'd rather get the get the the, the limousine travel. I'd rather right. get the nice travel. Have someone pick me up and send me, and I'm in the the back seat. But uh there been you gotta bring some honeys with you, right? There's yeah, there's, there's <laughs> been that. There has been that. There has been that. You know, you have the you get the limo on the back, and you have the wine. You get the dispensary. Mm. You have you know, it's like a like a mini vineyard that's on the bottom. So I had, it was like two sides. So it was, it was the left and the right, of course. And it was just like a mini, a little mini, like three, like three bottles, like mm-hmm. three bottles of white, three bottles of red. And I have them different. So you can have, you know, Cabernet, whatever. And you, you have some nice stuff and that's it, man. That's how I like to travel if yeah. I can, you know, if I'm not, but if I, if I have to go with people, if I have to, I will. Um, there've been some interesting, uh, Interesting times in the UK. You're traveling with 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 Sanjay Baga, mm. you know, in his his uh, truck. It was a whole lot of things, you know. And Alan Lee Travis out there, but to give the UK guys a, a shout, uh, Alan Lee Travis and uh, the Voros twins, uh, you know, who I actually am proficient at telling apart. You know, it's yeah. like there's Chris and there's Patrick, and I'm like, oh, that's Chris. That's and and they're so identical. To the world that you can, it's very easy to make stuff. This isn't like the Bellas where it's, you can clearly see which one is which. You yeah, know, yeah. this yeah. is, you know, so it's kind of like, and even like the Usos, you can tell the Usos apart yeah. very well, you know. Was but, it hard being on the other side of the road, you know, uh, the first couple of days? I wasn't driving. I mean, just, just feeling that at least <laughs> <laughs> the first time? Uh, yeah, but I've seen that. I've seen that before. Mm-hmm. The other side of the road travel. I just don't do it. You know, I'm not driving. You know, I'll mm-hmm. pay you all the money in the world to drive me. I'm not driving. It's not that I can't drive. Mm-hmm. It's just I don't need yeah. to. I don't want to. Well, I, I'll, I'll give you what you want. Money drives the world. Yeah. you telling me if I give you this amount of dollars and you're not trained and drive, You are trained and driving clearly to do it. Mm-hmm. You're going to. When, when, when you were overseas in Canada and uh, in, in England and Canada... Um, do the fans treat you the same way? Do they still kind of get angry that you're that you're coming up kind of smug? Uh, smug, that's the word. Some people will say that, right? Yeah, plenty, plenty. Uh, and people can say what they want. You know what it is? Is people either want you miserable mm-hmm. or they want you silent. Um, you know, for you to be confident in this world today, it's threatening. I'm very threatening to people. Mm-hmm. I'm very... Uh, I bring about self-awareness. I make people think about themselves, and they don't like that. Uh, they reflect it onto me. People love to project their issues and their problems onto me. And even in, even in my, in my in business, it's just kind of like people want to give you stuff. And it's like, listen, I have a job I have to do. I have to have iron skin. I have to... In the world that we're living in, mm-hmm. you have to. You have to be bulletproof. You can't... If, if you got to throw someone in front of you, you got to throw someone in front of you. But you, you yourself have to be bulletproof. You have to persevere. Because there's always somebody that's trying to clip at you. The higher you get, the more people are beneath you. So what do you think they're going to try and do? Yeah. So, Dad, uh-huh. you know, when you're home and you're relaxing in your mansion, what are some of the things that you like to do? You know, that the world probably wouldn't know. 
Uh, well, I love art. Yeah. I'm big, yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big art uh, fan. So, um, uh, contemporary, just uh, classical, um, just art. And it's kind of like, it doesn't really matter what it particularly is, whether it's a poster, whether it's a painting. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that. Uh, I'm a big, I'm a music guy. I used to play more instruments. Uh, but, uh, you know, I was to actually put that up before um, I did the piano. I did uh, the clarinet, I did the uh, harmonica, and I also did, I briefly dabbled in violin. But I like to have them played for me. Mm. (laughs) But I'm a big classical, uh, yeah, I just, just, collecting too, I just, I'm a, collecting watches, that's my thing. Mm. I just like to, I like good, the finer things in life. I just, and, and, and I work to get those things. I don't beg for them, I don't, you know, ask for them, I work for them. Mm. Would you donate to the um, Fuck Money Collection of Virgil? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're doing pretty well. What does Virgil need a donation for? <laughs> he has a GoFundMe. Why does he have a GoFundMe? To become GoFundMe. the million dollar man. Oh, to become Ted DiBiase? Well, he it's... tried that before. <laughs> How'd that work out? I mean, he did win the million dollar championship at, Res- at SummerSlam. He, I mean... needs to, he needs to call Ted. <laughs> he needs to call Ted. I don't think I'm not talking. talking about the talking bear. <laughs> I'm talking about DiBiase... The same DiBiase that shook hands with Donald Trump in the front row of WrestleMania. That's the Don- that is the Ted DiBiase that Virgil. I don't know how they slipped up. Maybe Virgil. Maybe Ted got a new, uh, uh, a new uh, lap dog, a new butler, a bodyguard. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. And the thing is, is I don't even. I would. I would almost consider letting Virgil be my butler just because of his history. The Ted mm. DiBiase, what have you? Um, but I know he'd end up fighting because he did it to Ted. And he's ungrateful, and he's he's a loudmouth. So it's kind of like. He's my hero. I, I bet he is. He's your loud he's mouth a lot, hero. A lot of people's hero. He's he's <laughs> he's 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 somebody's hero somewhere. But no. But in all seriousness, I mean, virtual. Would, it would be a nice meeting for him to see the new. I don't want to say the new million dollar man uh, because I'm my own man. Uh, but for Virgil to see a real man of wealth, we always have to talk about him on this podcast. Virgil's so. Virgil's a funny lad. I will say that the, the man is is funny. He's comical. Somebody who isn't funny. Is Matt Riddle? You have to take him very seriously uh, at all times in that ring. That guy knows what he's doing from the UFC uh, I to the wrestling. Him. Yeah, I know you wrestled him. <laughs> As my question, I mean, uh, you know, you, I beat him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> NXT superstar Matt Riddle, you have victory. Yeah. Um, you know, any reservations getting in the ring with him, knowing that his background was in the UFC, was you know, uh, like a real, you know contender for UFC gold and stuff like that. I respected his resume, uh, uh, his sports resume. Mm-hmm. So if there was anybody that I ever stepped in a ring with and I said to myself, okay, this is going to be, this is going to be a night for me. Mm-hmm. It would be, it would be Matt Riddle. Um, that was, I, I stood across the ring with him. He's, 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 he's jiggling. He's, he's raring to go. And I'm, Looking, I'm scanning him right now, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm like, where am I, which, where can I grab? What can I do? What can I, and, and his mind goes so quick. He's not, he, the thing about him is he comes off like he's airheaded in a loop, but he's oh. a very, he's a very quick, quick, he's agile and he's smart. He is smart. He's physically smart. He may not seem to be mentally intellectual, but physically it's like he's like a physical computer out there, and it's like I have to be able to snatch him up, and I and that's that's what people don't to get the credit that is missing, and that's why I don't want them their adulation because they don't really truly respect me. Mm-hmm. So I don't want your 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 fraudulent cheers because I did a move that you like. That's because you do. That's because I did a move you like. You're not cheering because of me. Mm-hmm. You're not cheering these people, these wrestlers, because you like them. You're cheering them because they do stuff that you want to see. They do things that you like. Oh, he does a shooting star. He flips over the top and he lands on the guy's chest. Yay! Yeah. You think they care about that person? Yeah. They just find another one. They just get rid of that guy and they find another guy that can do that same flip. And then they cheer him. I don't want that. Get yeah. out of here. You know what I found out when Matt Riddle was really tough? I saw him at GCW and he just got in the ring... After, like barefoot after like lightning bowl, uh, light bulbs were smashed and stuff like that. And I'm like, I I don't even want to be on that floor barefoot. No, that's not happening. That's <laughs> let, let Matt. This guy is me- mentally tough. I'm yeah, like, <laughs> me- he's mentally something. That's not for me. Listen, yeah. I'm a wrestler. I came into this professional wrestling. Some people, 
You want to do your death match? You want to do your psycho circus? You want to do this? That's fine. But there's a place for that. Now, that's, I'm not saying there's no place for that in wrestling. Wrestling is an amalgamation of ice cream flavors, okay? Yeah. There's chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, blah, 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 blah. Flavors forever. But the thing is, the main flavors are chocolate and vanilla. Strawberry is a popular third, but I'm talking the main flavors that need to be in every ice cream store. Mm-hmm. All right? There are some flavors you might not see a mint chocolate chip, Rocky Road, but you are going to see chocolate and vanilla. And that's what I pride myself on are the basics of professional wrestling. And if you can master those, you can master anything else. You can compete against anybody. You know, if you know how to get in and out of the ring, if you know how to counter, if you know how to be intuitive, there's no body that you can't be actively uh, competitive in there with. Yeah. You know, actually before, who would you want to face right now? But on the flip side, what companies are you looking at or should be scouting you? Ah. Uh, well, to say should be, and then I'm on the podcast. No. Uh, <laughs> listen, I just, I'm looking to be on TV at this mm-hmm. point. Um, you know, I've, I've worked harder. I've done what I needed to do with myself. Um, I've improved myself in many ways, um, professionally and outside of the ring, which mm-hmm. people very, very close to me would know. People who are familiar with me would know. Mm-hmm. I've made a lot of corrections and changes. Not that any, not that things were particularly wrong, but I've improved upon myself in a myriad of ways. All right, mm-hmm. work life, professional life, life in general, and I keep building upon that. It's like Jenga, and I just won't let it fall. I just got to keep picking it up, and. There's no other option for me. I have to do this for myself. Nobody has my my back like that. If I fall, nobody's going to catch me. I don't mm-hmm. have that. I don't have that um, supreme support system. I don't have these faux friends that are going to catch me to throw me back. I'm not. I have to do it for myself. And I feel that I truly deserve the best things in life. I truly deserve the finest things in life because at the end of the day, I know that I am the guy for for the job. I know I'm the right guy, and I know I'm a great human being and I know that I deserve great things so whatever I have to do to get those things I'm going to do it you know I'm honest to people I don't waste your time I tell you the truth I tell it like it is I don't go behind the curtain and talk about somebody I say I'll say it to you if I feel that way if I if it's necessary I haven't been that way in my life and I've worked for everything that I've gotten that's that's what a good human is that's mm-hmm. what a good person is somebody that works hard somebody that doesn't that stays true to themselves? Mm-hmm. That doesn't fake, put a fake light upon themselves just so they can get popular. Somebody that works hard, keeps his nose in the grind. All right, mm-hmm. that's that's a good person. That's what I am. And that's what I I continue to be. And people may not want to see it. People don't want to see it because they want me to be this thing. They make me out to be this bad monster, this guy, this terrible guy. But is that more of a statement of me, or is that more of a statement of you? Mm, I know that's crazy that that that, that you had that perception and that that's cool, man. Because I didn't, no one, I didn't think that way. You thought that way, um, so I'm glad you you. I actually think I thought. Uh, I thought you know, seeing you come out of that you know that rampway and seeing you you know get in that ring with people, you know, um, I was maybe with the the ninety percent of the fans you know who 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 thought you were just some rich guy. Uh, who thought you were better than everybody else? And now that there's some perspective to it, you know, you you just changed my mind. Uh... Well, this is because it's not that I just think I'm better than people. See, this mm-hmm. is this is what it is. It's so you're you're superior, you're inferior in this world. Mm-hmm. I made a decision that I have to be better. Mm-hmm. I must be better because if the if someone out there is better than you mm-hmm. and has an advantage over you and is going for the same thing that you want, they're mm-hmm. gonna get it. So I cannot allow that to happen. Mm. I dedicated myself to making sure that I get to be the first one looked at, the first one chosen. I have to be. Mm-hmm. I have to be. Because the moment I fall, there's so many people that are ready to push push me down and pull me down. Mm-hmm. There's so many people that want to see me fail. And if I take a st- if I stumble on a rock, they're gonna be right there to make sure there are no other rocks in the vicinity for me to latch onto and I'm gonna fall. That's what they want. Mm-hmm. That's what people want. And I can't give them that. So people can look at me like I'm this bad guy that doesn't care. I'm, I care more than you care. Mm-hmm. I do. 
Yeah, it sounds like it, man. You can hear that passion. That's what I mean. So it's kind of like people can vilify me. People can say I'm all these things. I'm going to be eternally vilified. That's Mm. just the way it is. Because at the end of the day, I will do things to get ahead that you may not like, that you may not approve of. I may do things that you don't find fair. Mm. But you know what? Life isn't fair. What I've gone through in certain aspects, I'm not saying I have I haven't had a, a bad life in any way. I'm not I was I was not born in any way uh of an impoverished nature. I was I I was born middle class. I wasn't born rich. I wasn't born wealthy. I was born into a nice middle class do well family and I made myself upper echelon. I brought myself Mm-hmm. To that wealthy status, I worked for that. I saved when I was younger. I listened when I was told I did it. I saved money. I always had secondary. I taught myself mm-hmm. secondary and tertiary accounts, young, so that I always stored money away, mm-hmm. stored it away, build it, building upon it, stored it away. Read my benefits, read my rights. Didn't matter where I was working. I made sure I knew what was going on. And now at my age. I'm at a very, very strong place because I played the right cards. Mm -hmm. I looked at investments. I studied. I taught myself these things. I went to school, but -hmm. (laughs) but what I'm saying is I taught myself Mm -hmm. how to get to these places. And I didn't have to go out here and brag. I don't have to tell people about the masters. I don't have to tell people about what I did because I let that show for itself. I want to ask you this, Darius. You know, because you are sometimes the most hated wrestler on that show have people <laughs> waited for you outside the you know, the venue yes really happened. uh i've had families uh families oh yeah like uh the father the mother and then the two or three kids because the kids are upset and then the parents feel they need to defend their children wow when, when they should be telling their children to step back you're you're over here you almost have your child on a leash and you're letting it attack me like this <laughs> is the walking dead or something it's like the this is what people do. People are out of control, fan. They're unkempt. You know, they're, they're, there needs to be security. That's one of the first things that I look at. When I come to a show, if there's no security, then uh-huh. I know that this is this show is, is, is minor. You have not hired someone to, to, to watch these people. Do you have guardrails? Because people are animals. They can just come up, grab you. They wouldn't come into the ring with Jimmy Havoc had an axe in the back. Of no, no, no. They, oh, they I was, was there. Yeah, they, they were would. sitting in the chair for that. I wasn't running either. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. Good. good I had some medical wasn't. conditions, but I was. Yeah, right. Medical conditions. I had a medical condition too. All right. All right. Mine's called, my mine's called successful. That's my medical condition. You write that down. I will. I some people can't even sell successful, so I'll spell it out for them. So, come on, man. There is <laughs> One of my favorite things about you, man. Is that you? You literally can go with anybody, you know. Bull James, Sunny Kiss, you know, um, who's who's man? It's just people you've been in the ring with. Anthony Bones, the five tool player, just recently, um, you know. I appreciate you watching. You know, yeah, you have to. You know, yeah. you have to keep an eye on Darius actually. Carter. Yeah. You know, you. I mean, what's the mission statement? Uh, you know, you said to go on TV. Is there a preference? Do you want to be on Impact? Do you want to be on Lucha Underground? Do you want to be WWE NXT? Uh, you, always, always, you always want the biggest fish. If you don't want... It's like wanting the world... If you don't want the world championship, if you mm-hmm. don't want the top of the top, then what are you doing it for? Uh, so, of course, you know, I want to be to, to you know, to Stanford. Mm-hmm. But I'm, it, I don't have to rush there. You know, I want to be on TV like mm-hmm. yesterday. But where that TV is, it doesn't have to be particularly WWE. It can be something else. But that's where I feel I'm at. I always felt like I'm a... They talk about what type of guy you are, what type of wrestler you are. An indie wrestler, you a, 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 a scramble wrestler, like a flip wrestler. Uh, are you this wrestler? Are you that wrestler? Are you a moves wrestler? I am a TV wrestler. Mm-hmm. I look. I work to where the, I want to know where the cameras are. I want to know where who's filming, where they're filming from, and mm-hmm. I want to make eye contact because I want the world to look at me. I don't want you with your hands in your pocket, you're on your phone, you're texting. That's not going to work for me. I have to have your attention at all times. That's why I have to hurt some people because I need you to pay attention at all times. I'm not out here to dilly dally. There's no dead space between moves. You know. All right. Now they both hit the boot. Okay. Here we go. Let's wait. And then, oh, here's another one. I'm not this. I'm not a, here for the roller coaster. I'm not here to uh, to entertain you. Uh, you are watching me. You're the audience. Mm-hmm. You're there. You're paying to see me. I get paid 
to be seen. Mm-hmm. We, I'm not working for you. You're 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 gonna like what I what I'm doing. You're gonna react to what I'm doing. If you mm-hmm. don't, then leave. You know, yeah. Plus, you've also been there with Stevie Richards, mm. Jeff Cobbs, and um, you know Sandow, Damian Sandow. Yeah. Um, oh. Have any of these guys, even the ones that we talked about prior, um, like Magic Nunzio, what was the best advice that you were given? Damien Sandow actually gave strong advice. Uh, and Sandow was saying, uh, you know, don't let people take you from you. Mm. Don't let people uh, try and make you something that you're not because that's what they're going to do. And people can throw money at you and then then you'll do it. But then it's unfulfilling mm-hmm. because you have money, but you ha- you're not, you know, it's not, it's not achieve the way that you wanted to achieve it uh and i completely empathize with that i completely understand that that was great for me um I, i'm not ever and that's what I, that's the thing about me is i'm not going to pretend i'm not going to change myself i evolve in front of people when we ask about how i evolved i've mm-hmm. matured i've learned i've grown some people they do whatever they can just to get popular they they do a fad they see a couple moves that are popular they do those they see a movie that's popular now they're that's their their that's their shit that's their quote unquote gimmick for a month mm-hmm. people aren't authentic as much anymore and i think that's why they open the curtain for these fans because they almost want the fans to help them find themselves i guess maybe it's a symbiotic relationship i'm not sure um but you you should as a performer it's our job to know what we want to do and know what we want to be to go out there and when the spotlight is on we amp it up and i feel like a lot of people don't have that amp so they look for that energy in so many different ways that's not it's not it's not right mm-hmm. you know yeah if it's not coming from within you it's not real mm-hmm. and that's the thing is my inspiration has always come from me i've drawn it of course from other people like william regal like nick bockwinkle the nature boy rick flair billy robinson Mm -hmm. those are my that's my those are my founding fathers all right you want to talk about the the mount rushmore i don't care about what how you want to categorize it those are my four people those are my inspirations and that's how you know that's how i live man i love your entrance robe uh when you come out and stuff like that very william-esque um you know. Very regal. <laughs> Very regal. Yes, yeah. of course. Um, I got that in. I got that in uh, in the UK. So that you makes did. Sense. Yes, I did. Uh, was it hard dropping the scarf? I haven't dropped the scarf. I just don't. It's not. Uh, it's not my prominent thing anymore. Um, the problem is, is it was, uh, it was, it was bitten a lot. Really? Yeah. I had the scarf for. Oh, and I, I have proof of this all right people, people bite the scarf not bite like oh. actually bite like, oh, like 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 ripped it off I'm oh saying. really so like so i just kind of like the crusade for change where mm-hmm. if you, anyone who's been paying attention independent wrestling you see how the crusade for change has been ripped off in a lot of places mm-hmm. there have been a lot of places that try and take what we had and oh they didn't like us so they try to put it on their guys you know a promoter's like oh let me grab my five guys and Darius carter's no good and the crusade's not really good anyone can do that so then they try it Put some mass on. It's it maybe gets talked about for like a day, a mm-hmm. week, and then it's gone because they don't know what to do with it. Uh, the Crusade for Change is very, very ambitious. We're very driven. You don't just get to put on a mask or uh, a V for Vendetta mask, a Guy Fox mask, and then just be like, "Hey, we're the Crusade, and we're gonna beat you up and mm-hmm. rip up your show." It's not how it worked. We're very ambitious, very motivated. So we get ripped off. And the thing is with the scarf is everybody, you know, people, I'm wearing a scarf and then it's all over the place now. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, you know, you got all these people. Now everyone, oh, they're the scarf. And it's like, you know what? And it, it's not even, and that's the thing about fashion. It's like when you're fa- when you're a fashion, it's not that it has to be trending right this time, but you have to ascend. You have to uh, evolve. Mm-hmm. So people, you, I still wear scarves. People see me. I haven't put the scarves up in the hanger and, and it's... And we're singing the swan song. Mm-hmm. It's just I come out in the robe now because mm-hmm. the robe is honestly what I wanted for a while, but I needed to find the right one. Mm-hmm. I can't have ninety eight percent of what I want. I need a hundred percent. So I I saw what I needed, custom fitted, and I was like, that's gonna work. Yeah. Ric Flair robe, that's it. Robe William Regal robe. I love robes. Robes, yeah. are, you know. Technically, it's a jacket, but uh, a, a coat, but um, mm. you know when. You know, you still carry the mask with you, that gold mask. 
Mm-hmm. Um, why why do you still carry the mask? Because the the mask represents everything. My starting point to where I am now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mask is everything that I've gone through from 2013 of when I started the crusade, March of 2013, mm-hmm. to now. There's a lot of history in the mask. We talk about the people I faced. Mm-hmm. I came out with that mask when I faced them. Mm-hmm. That's that's the amulet. That's the token right there. That's what you can put it all into. What is Darius Carter's insignia? Insignia. You can say a scarf, but you can really say the mask, because that mask is also a look at all these people. Because that's what people are wearing mm-hmm. every day is a mask, and I'm letting people know this is what, this is almost a reflection of yourself. You know what I mean? But most importantly, it's really representing an idea. All right. It means that mask is representing like the Guy Fox, you know, like the gunpowder plot. Mm-hmm. It's representing an idea that you're gonna fight for no matter what. That whole Guy Fox plan, that whole trying to try, trying to ruin the that was gonna was gonna fail from the beginning, and, and to a lot of people it seemed okay. But it was a strong strategy. It was a strong plan, and it could have worked if they didn't get snitched on. Mm-hmm. But the mask is very critical. It's about history. It's kind of history, really. I mean, you just alluded to before your Mount Rushmore mm-hmm. uh, of wrestlers that you aspire to be like. Um, but who was it before that? Who what was the hook that got you in? Was it Bret Hart? Was it Miss? You know, was it The Rock? Was it Mister? It Perfect? was Ric Flair. It was Ric Flair. Oh yeah, it was Ric Flair. Everything about Ric Flair. Uh, really? Oh yeah, in and out of the ring, uh, the walk, the talk. He had the best. I mean, the guy had the right friends. You know, his friends weren't just anybody. He wasn't dragging any of them along. Mm-hmm. Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, you know, you're going to say Ole Anderson? Uh, Ole was great. Ole was great. You know, Ole was in, in his own right. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Ole was. Uh, these were, these are the people that he was, J.J. Dillon, even these managers. Like, Ric Flair surrounded himself with successful people. He had the women. He had the cars, he had the the Rolex, he had the championships, he had the acumen. You couldn't deny it. He wrestled everywhere. It was the territory master. You can't deny it. Everybody wanted Ric Flair. Everybody wanted to be Ric Flair. And you couldn't be Ric Flair. That's why they booed him, because they just couldn't be him. They couldn't be him. They're not going to cheer him. Oh, that's not their initial reaction. It's not to cheer a guy like that. See a guy like that, and they say, oh, what about him is so good? What? You know, boo. You know, it's mm-hmm. boo you, sir. That's what they do. They see me, they boo. Because naturally, there's an envy there. Everybody mm-hmm. wants to ride in a limousine, right? But at the same token, you see a limousine, you're throwing eggs. You want to throw eggs in a limousine. Yeah, you, you do. Know? Yeah, sometimes you do. You do. You're, <laughs> you're upset. You know what I mean? You're, cause just because. Just because. It's a limousine. Mm, that is true. Um, so Darius... You know, looking back at what you've done so far, what has been the personal highlight for you? Uh, and what's something that you also want to carry into 2019? Like a good habit that you have? Winning championships? Mm. <laughs> but really, to, to be the face of a company. Mm-hmm. So now every time that company promotes a show, their monthly, mm-hmm. what have you, they have to have you on the poster because you're the champion. They have to... They, they're bringing in somebody from... Uh, from Djibouti, whoever they're bringing these people, okay? But really, these television stars or these people that are about to go on television, all the quote-unquote name-brand people, they send them to the champion. Those are the people I need to be facing. I need to be facing those elite competitors. Mm -hmm. I need more eyes to be on me, the right eyes to be on me, so then I can get that television slip that I need that I want, that I crave, and I'm getting in a lot of ways because I am on TV. I'm on Fight TV. I'm on these programs. But I'm talking about on a on a cable station. Mm-hmm. Now I'm talking about you turn on the TV, all right? I'm beyond the app, I'm I'm on app TV. You know, mm-hmm. I need I want to be on on cable TV, and and I've worked very proficiently and very hard to do that. I think that I have more working against me in the back than in the front. If you understand what I'm saying, but I will get there. I will get there. And when I do, it's going to be amazing to see the people that congratulate you and the ones that don't. 
the ones that block you privately, because that's happened to me. I got <laughs> blocked and didn't even know I was blocked. And I'm not going to say any names. I won't call any names out. But this is the way the world is, man. People hear word of mouth. It's a game of telephone where six people down, it's a completely different message. They're all crying by the end of it. We're not, you know, we need men. We need... and. Ah, people gotta. People have to step up. That's why now the women are killing it. The women are out here. You see Mercedes oh. Mia because some of these guys are just dropping the ball. And now you have the women who are uprising, and now it's guys versus girls. Or we're all in it. Sure, you can say we're all in this together. But what I'm saying is, when you're talking about some of the hottest competitors right now, Becky Lynch, WWE, she's the hottest competitor in the world right now. She's the man. That's it. You know, <laughs> we're not. You're not. So that's just the way it is right now. So. People all have to step up, male, female, because that main event spot can be grabbed by anyone. So when you asked me earlier, Darius, do you, how do you prepare against a woman? What difference does that make to me? At the end of the day, it's about the top spot. If you're Becky Lynch, I'll kick you as hard in the face as if you're Brock Lesnar, as if you're Daniel Bryan. Whatever has to be done, if you don't want that top spot, mm-hmm. what are you doing? Look in the mirror and, t- and ask yourself why. Yeah, I guess it, it is kind of survival of the fittest, if you put it that it way. It is survival of the know, fittest. Uh, in life and wrestling. That's what fans don't get. I'm just glad I don't have to hit women. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you do that for me. <laughs> I, get to watch. I do it for myself. But you get to watch. I do what I have to do. I do what right. I have to do. And I'm glad I don't have to look at you across the ring. I'm glad I get to watch you from the barricades. Yeah. Um, Darius. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me. Uh, <laughs> but Darius, you know, it, it has been such an honor to watch you grow um seeing what you've been doing lately um yeah, we wish i wish you the best of luck i know derek if he was here he would uh do the same because i've made him research you <laughs> <laughs> good um, you should have known who i was already oh yeah still, oh yeah he knows research. yeah but uh you know but like i like i said man you know the sky's the limit for you we hope that you you, you reach all the goals that you set for yourself um where can people get you on social media if they want to connect with you? That's uh, You can get me on Twitter um, and Facebook slash Mr. Darius Carter. Um, you can spell that quite easily. Darius is D-A-R-I-U-S if people are really stumbling on that. Um, so uh, there's that. Uh, you can find me on Facebook as well, my fan page, uh, which has uh, over a thousand likes and follows. So that's, that's a nice thing. Uh, if that means anything anymore. Uh, well, for a lot of people, that's how you get booked, but, uh, um, uh, that's, um, uh, Facebook slash wrestling's richest prize. So I like to put different posts on the, on the fan page than my normal Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Um, so I like to keep that interactivity there. Not even with the fans, just, just the, I like to use those different platforms and see who's liking what. It's like my own experimentation. Uh, Twitter is my primary. Um, I haven't got done an Instagram yet because I, I don't. That culture is not particularly for me, but I know I'm going to end up getting one. Yeah, get IG, man. I will. I will. <laughs> I will. I think uh, I, I tell myself once I get the, uh, the t- for, once I get a TV deal, I'll do it. You got to do it for the Instagram models. I, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose. You know, I don't have time. But uh, honestly, you know, I'd rather I'll, I'll buy, see the model in person. You know what <laughs> I mean? And trust me, I do. But no, but uh, I might. I'm going to do an Instagram. It's a matter of time. I just, I just don't have the, you know. The, the that's not my culture at this time. It will happen. You can hashtag Darius Carter on Instagram. And... People hashtag me on Instagram, and I don't even have an Instagram, so that's lovely. Are yeah. you on hashtag Darius Carter? It's a very private site, though. So like, you can't just surf it. You have to like sign in to surf. You can't really yeah. surf. So that's kind of annoying. But eventually, I'll I'll get one. You know, but... I'm not a picture. I'm not posted up pictures every single day. I I like you know words, and and, and I like putting out the the quick Twitter, the quick tweet. I like putting out the Facebook, here's some video, this and that. I'm not snapping 8,000 pictures. I don't want people in my life. I don't want people, I could be on a yacht. That doesn't mean (laughs) I want to take a picture of it. I don't have anything to prove to you. I don't want want anything. I want you to look at the yacht and and know where I'm at. You can map it or something and find out where I am and get out of here. At least I'd like an invite to the yacht. (laughs) A lot of people want an invite to the yacht. Yeah, well, a lot of people do. There's long lines. You know what I mean? Space Mountain. Hold this line. Hold this ride. That's it. That's it, man. That's it. I'm not the the oldest ride, but, you know, but I tell you what, the line is lengthy. You know what I mean? Oh, that's fantastic. The line's long for the measuring stick. (laughs) (laughs) That is Mr. Darius Carter. So, there's that. 
And for us, we are Wrestling IQ 101. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wrestling IQ 101. And you can listen to us here on YouTube. And you can listen to us on the B Plus Player Network. Guys, again, Darius, thank you again for taking out the time. And everyone will see you again very soon.